Welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. Another fairly typical week of news has just passed. We've got some CPU related stuff, some GPU related stuff, a few game related stories that I'm sure will annoy some of the gamers watching this video and the usual odds and ends. It's Friday, weather is nice here for those that love getting our uh, Aussie weather reports. And um, yeah, let's get into some news. First topic from this week concerns Intel's latest enterprise announcements. Now. We don't usually cover enterprise and server grade hardware all that much because we're more of a consumer focused channel, but there are a few interesting things to point out among the announcements. If you want a full breakdown of everything that was announced, I'd recommend checking out Anantec's comprehensive coverage. What I want to look at are the server CPUs specifically because these usually give an indication of where high-end desktop chips are headed. But with Intel being unable to transition past 14 nanometers, at least for now, they're stuck doing some pretty crazy things to improve performance with their server platforms. As expected, Intel have announced and detailed Cascade Lake AP, which officially becomes the Xeon Platinum 9200 family. The top end chip gives buyers the full 56 cores with 112 threads and 77 megabytes of level three cache. When running at a base frequency of 2.6 gigahertz, along with a presumably 3.6 gigahertz single core turbo, the Xeon Platinum 9282 comes with a massive 400 watt TDP. This then filters down through a 48 core option at 300 watts and two 32 core options at 250 watts. Each CPU has 40 lanes of PCIe 3.0 and 12 channel DDR4 2933 support. However, these are not socketed chips. Intel is producing them as BGA only and will be sold through OEMs as a full server design. Intel aren't talking about pricing, but you can bet the CPU alone will be ridiculously expensive. Then we have the rest of the Cascade Lake family comprising of Xeon Platinum, Gold, Silver, and Bronze CPUs. There are a ton of options here, but there hasn't been much of an upgrade when it comes to specifications. For example, the new Xeon Platinum 8280, replacing the 8180, is only clocked 200 megahertz higher for both the base and boost clocks across 28 cores within the same 205 watt TDP. Considering that pricing for Intel's 28 core CPUs still sits between 10 and $18,000, yeah, we can expect that 56 core CPU to be significantly higher than that. You'd think more than double, which would make it a mid five figure price CPU. There are a few other features here for enterprises to use, but again, if you're interested, I suggest reading the Enantec article given it's not really our area of expertise. From looking at these releases, it does seem like Intel doesn't have anywhere to go with high-end desktop processors until 10 nanometers arrives. I certainly don't expect them to push out 56 cores to desktops anytime soon. Meanwhile, we're very interesting to see how AMD goes with second generation Epic and how that translates to Threadripper CPUs later in the year. With Intel stagnating, there's a big opportunity here, I think. Speaking of AMD, in what shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, the company is hosting a keynote at Computex on the day before the show officially kicks off. There are basically no details on what will be shown other than some vague descriptions. AMD's event invite says, AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su will be delivering a first of its kind CEO keynote on high performance computing technologies at Computex 2019. During the keynote, Dr. Lisa Su and other high profile guests will highlight new details of upcoming products and showcase how leading edge technologies and an open ecosystem are driving an inflection point in computing in 2019, a milestone year marking the 50th anniversary of AMD. So there will be all the usual stuff, more information about third generation Ryzen processors would make sense, probably some stuff on AMD's GPU roadmap, you know the drill and all the stuff to expect. We don't have any additional insights to share with you on what AMD will be showing at this stage, although it does sound like the keynote will be more on the teaser slash announcement side of the scale rather than a full product launch, at least going on AMD's activities at Computex, at least those that we know of so far. Intel are continuing to suck up talent from everywhere in the industry for their GPU division, this time hiring Tom Peterson from NVIDIA. As originally broken, I think, by Hot Hardware and Gamers Nexus, Peterson moved from NVIDIA to Intel at the start of April, which is a pretty big coup for the blue team. Peterson was involved heavily with NVIDIA's technical marketing team, 
but also worked as an engineer on various projects. So he's the sort of person that would be highly sought after by a team entering the GPU market. Peterson adds to a collection of talent hired by NVIDIA in recent years, including Raja Kaduri and Chris Hook from AMD, as well as Jim Keller, formerly from AMD and also Tesla. Get ready to rage gamers because Borderlands 3 has been announced as another timed exclusive for the Epic Games Store. The game is launching on September 13, but will only be available through Epic's platform with other digital storefronts getting access in April 2020. I guess only having six months of exclusivity is a bit of an improvement over the situation with other titles, but it will still disappoint those that feel like Epic's store is lacking in features compared to the vastly more popular Steam. Epic Games also recently backtracked on their statement about how they will eventually stop poaching games from Steam. CEO Tim Sweeney said that Epic is open to continuing to sign funding slash exclusivity deals with willing developers and publishers regardless of their previous plans or announcements around Steam, although these calls must be up to the developers and publishers. From the developer and publisher side of things, it certainly seems like Epic is doing something right, as Borderlands 3 is one of many exclusive games on the platform. Even publishers with their own storefront like Ubisoft are jumping ship from Steam to the Epic Store. However, the lack of fundamental launch and store features compared to Steam will continue to frustrate gamers, many of which think these deals are anti-consumer. In more annoying news for gamers, EA is adding microtransactions into Battlefield 5 in what is a move that shouldn't surprise anyone who knows EA. The in-game currency directly tied to real-world dollars is called Battlefield Currency, or BC, a name that the development team I'm sure spent hours debating. You'll be able to use BC to purchase cosmetics, as well as unique elite characters and timer saver XP boosts. The latter two will be introduced in future updates. EA says the elite character does not grant any type of gameplay advantage, so it doesn't come with any special weapons outside of a signature melee weapon. Meanwhile, the time saver option isn't quite a pay to win scheme, but something about it doesn't seem right to me for a multiplayer title. I think everyone should have equal access to XP gains without paying. The timing of this one also surprises me a bit given Battlefield 5 is still struggling to establish itself in the multiplayer ranks. Sure, it does have a new Battle Royale mode, but after a poor launch I think it's still a bit too soon to be chucking microtransactions into the game. Interested to hear your thoughts on this though in the comments. Two quicker stories to round out this shorter episode of News Corner. First up we have the new Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200 adapter. If you recall, the various Wi-Fi standards were renamed a while back with Wi-Fi 6 referring to what used to be 802.11ax. So this new adapter is built for the latest Wi-Fi standards. It comes in an M.2 form factor and also has Bluetooth 5.0, so it will be seen in plenty of laptops. Plus it supports stuff like 2x2 MU MIMO and 160 MHz wide channels. With an OEM price between $10 and $17, it shouldn't be too expensive to include in new laptops. Final topic for this week relates to more NVIDIA deception, although this time it's about their entry-level laptop discrete GPUs. Notebook Check discovered that there are, surprise surprise, two variants of the MX250, NVIDIA's new GPU that just launched into the market. One is a 10 watt variant with a 1D52 ID, while the other is a 25 watt variant labeled 1D13. Clock rates differ quite a bit between the models, as does performance. With previous MX models, the 10 watt variant was about 30% slower than the 25 watt model. The big issue here is that once again, it's impossible for buyers to know which MX250 they are receiving when they purchase a laptop with the GPU inside. Because both GPUs carry the same name, how is a buyer supposed to know if they will be stuck with the slow or fast models unless the OEM goes into details on GPU clock speeds, which they rarely do. Another situation that just isn't good enough, it's time to lift your game on this one NVIDIA. And that's it for this week's News Corner. As always, you can subscribe to get this segment in your inbox every week. Consider supporting us on Patreon where you can get access to our Discord chat room. And I'll catch you in the next one.